When you import your character into Blender, it looks like this. But you want him to look more like this. And the rig looks like this, but you want him to look like this. And if you say before looked better, did did it really? Did before look better? No. No. So, to get your character creator character set up in Blender, there are a few important steps you have to know. In this video, we'll take a look at these steps. How to properly export and import into Blender, how to improve the texture quality, and a bunch of tips and tricks along the way. We've just created our character for our next film in Character Creator. For this project, I recorded some motion capture using Rococo Smart Suit Pro 2. This process works with any motion capture or any animation file. Simply drag and drop the FBX file onto your character, then click here and select the same file again. This properly retargets the animation onto your character. This is for adding a reference pose. Rococo sets their first frame to be a T pose. This helps properly retarget the animation. If your animation doesn't have a reference frame, or if you crop the beginning of your animation, you should skip this step and leave this box empty. The same steps apply in iClone. Then we can send our character to iClone for further cleanup or just export right from Character Creator. There are two ways of exporting, both in iClone or Character Creator. The first way is Go to File, Export, FBX, Clothed Character, choose Blender from this drop-down menu, Maximum Texture Size 4K for the highest quality, and convert image to JPEG because it takes less space. Now, this is important. If your character has animation, don't forget to click Current Animation. I always forget to do this, so I have to go back and re-export every time. Then we can define the animation length. In Character Creator, you can choose All because the project length will be set to how long your animation is. Just remember to define the frame rate while exporting. In iClone, if your project length is set to 10,000 frames and you export with All check, it's going to take a long time. So in iClone, always set in and out points here. Click Export. And I suggest creating a new folder for the characters. And Export. The other option is to use Blender Pipeline plugin that makes this process slightly faster and it allows us to export characters from Blender back into Character Creator and iClone. To import the character into our Blender scene, we will need the free CC Tools add-on. Download it. In Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install and install the add-on. And while we're here, also enable the Rigify add-on. This CC Tools add-on will appear in the end panel. You can bring this panel in and out with the N key. If you have wrinkles enabled in iClone and you have facial animation, check wrinkles. If not, you can turn that off. Then click Rigify. Click Import Character, navigate to your file and import. Give it a minute to load everything and set up the Rigify rig. Ah, we should be set. This brings in our character with the Rigify rig and sets up this complex node system and gives us a lot of flexibility over the materials. From the end panel we can do a bunch of changes. Click on the character to see these options appear under the character build settings. Choosing basic or advanced gives us different options here. For example, if you did prefer the dry look of the eyes or the shiny skin in the opening, you can make that change right from here. If you have wrinkles enabled, this means the add-on sets up the textures with wrinkle maps and with drivers. You can adjust the intensity of the wrinkles from the add-on right here. Let's move on to animation now. Here's how we can quickly adjust the animation in Blender. First, I like to delete some of the unnecessary keyframes. Open a new panel and go to Graph Editor. While your mouse is hovering over the options, if you press E, you can quickly open this panel. Click on the rig, go to Pose Mode, Press A to select all the bones. Then in the graph editor, in the search bar, write scale and delete all the keyframes here. These are just keyframes for the scale, which we have no animation for. After deleting, seemingly nothing changes, but Blender is slightly happier. Now let's edit the mocap. Go to nonlinear animation panel. While your mouse is hovering over the options, press N and this will bring up the panel. Find where your character is and click on push down action button. All our keyframes are now gone, but we can get back to them to edit them. If you click on the strip and press tab, let's get out of there with tab and click above the strip where it says no action. From the panel on the right, go to blending and change replace to combine. This basically just makes an editive animation layer in Blender. Now we are ready to edit our mocap in Blender. If you haven't done so yet, click on the rig, switch to pose mode. Go to a little bit earlier than where you want to add a correction. Add a keyframe to all the bones. Go a little bit after where you want the correction to end. Add another keyframe. This is so we don't mess with anything outside of what we want to change. Enable auto keying. Under the pose options, check auto IK. We can also enable regular IK from the CC tools add-on. The option for that will be under the item 
in the end panel. I've noticed this problem in 4.2. In Blender 4, everything imports correctly, but in 4.2, the arms are weird. And it's because you have to go into this arm control arrow and turn these into FKs. Now it looks correct. In Blender 4, it already imports like that. This is an issue for now that we have to keep in mind. One important note is, when you close this project file and reopen, it will ask you to run a Python script. These options under the item is that script. If you don't run that, you won't see these options here. But be cautious when running Python scripts in Blender. Only execute scripts if you're certain in their source and trust their origin. Back to our project. Here we can enable IK with this slider and I can grab the hand bone and move it. But since I'm doing a simple cleanup, I will turn this off and use the auto IK and grab the arm bone to make my correction. There, much better. Set it to 2083. I also have a bunch of hand poses from iClone that I added to my asset browser in Blender. I can quick depose the hands right from here. You can copy one character from one project file to another. Go to the bone, right click, select hierarchy or press E and then copy and then just paste it onto another project file. But when you do this you might notice their hair looks wrong. Strange. This is because when you import a character with the CC tools add-on, it automatically sets the light path and transparent to 50. Now it looks correct. So if you take one character from one project file to another, don't forget to go under light paths and set your transparent to 50. For facial animation, let's say you have this character, he has no facial animation and you have another character with facial animation and you want to transfer the animation from one to the other. If the character has no keyframes set in the shape keys, first you have to put keyframes to all the shape keys. There is a really easy way. Paste this text into your scripting panel, press X while the mouse is hovering over the options, click new and paste the script I put in the description. Click on the character without keyframes, run the script, now I can copy all the keyframes from one and paste it to the other. Click on the character, press A to select all the keyframes, copy, click on the other character and paste. This however won't paste any wrinkles because the wrinkle effect is in their texture. You can find the raw motion capture data in the description if you wish to play around with it. If you're looking for more motion capture data, I highly recommend Actor Core. Here we can find thousands of animation motion captured and keyframe animate, free and paid. You can find them in packs or as individual files. They have so many options and also so many actors here too. You can check out my crowd simulation tutorial to see how they work in action. Although we can attach accessories in Character Creator and iClone, I mostly prefer to stay in Blender because I model the accessories in Blender and I find it much easier to do it here. We can quickly attach accessories like this. Uncheck Auto Keying. Go to Pose Mode. Press A to select all the bones. Then Alt R. This resets the rotation. Then Alt G. This resets the position so we can attach things easier. Like this time machine on his arm. I position it. Then while the object is selected, shift click on the rig and go to Pose Mode. Click on the forearm bone. Ctrl P to parent and select bone from this menu. Now when I play the animation, the time machine sticks to his arm. Same thing for his mask, but I parented it to his head bone. Time travel. It's a funny thing. When you bring in characters with clothing, you might have their skin peeking through the clothing. For this, you can check the option to delete hidden faces when exporting, but I don't recommend that because if you decide to change the character's clothing down the line, the mesh will not be there and you will have to export your character again. So the option I recommend is to mask the protruding areas in Blender. To see how masking works in Blender, you can check out my dedicated tutorial and also find my free masking add-on there to see how you can mask away these areas with just one click. With masking, the process wouldn't be destructive and you can easily change the masked areas. These are all the steps I take to make sure my character creator characters are set up in Blender properly. I hope you enjoyed the video, learned something from it, and I hope you didn't forget to 
turn off the gas on your stove. Hey,